was sitting here stunned by Obama's unwillingness to take the war to the enemy, was stunned by the college girls and their idiotic re re rhetoric that they need jobs training in order to stop cutting heads off. Joining us now is a man I hope runs for the presidency, Donald Trump. Mr. Trump, welcome to the Savage Nation. Hi, Michael. How you doing? Donald, Donald, what are we going to do here? we got to win this war. Well, I watched the young lady that you're talking about saying that we have to create a better economy and jobs for ISIS, and I thought it was one of the most unbelievable performances I've ever seen, that we have to create... We can't create jobs for ourselves. I mean, China's taking all our jobs, and Mexico's taking our jobs. Now we're supposed to go over there and create jobs in Syria and other places for uh, these people, and that way they'll be much nicer, and they won't, they won't burn people at the stake, and they won't cut off heads. Incredible. Incredible. No, it's on any, any rational person, Democrat, Republican, anyone knows that this is idiotic. Unbelievable. But, I mean, but, but Donald, are you going to run or you're not ready to announce? The iceberg. I mean, it's so incompetent going on. Donald, Don, Donald Trump, are you willing to uh, come out and say you're going to run for the presidency ever? Well, what I'm doing is, I'm, I'm, and I am telling you, I am looking so strong. I just hate what's happening to the country. And I love what I do. I'm loving it. I'm having such fun, and I love building buildings. I'm building on Pennsylvania Avenue. I'm building in Miami. I'm building all over, and, and it's so great. But... I hate what's happening to the country, and I will tell you, I, and I think you know this, I am looking at it very, very seriously, yes. And I would turn it around, and I would make this country so great again. Well, here's the thing. We know, you know how great you are as a businessman. I admire you greatly. I can't imagine what, what it is, what it must feel like to see buildings going up that you are basically the producer of, the builder, the contractor in that regard. None of those things. You're the genius who thinks about it, puts the deals together. You make things happen. And I can't imagine how hard it is managing to get all the elements together, the unions and the, the finance and the this and the zoning and the city. Complicated. So you've dealt with these complicated issues. And people say, look, he would be a good president, but he's not going to leave what he has because he's got, he's created such a world. Why would he leave that to be such to take such a small job as the presidency and that really is a you know that's not a, an insignificant question donald well i think the answer is very simple i love the country and i hate what's happening to the country and all of the things i do and and all of the great buildings whether it's the old post office on pennsylvania avenue or so many others that i've done and and are doing uh you know all of everything that i've done doesn't mean anything if the country goes to hell and the country right now is just it's just a laughing stock. I mean, a lot of what you see. Look at even the ceasefire. They do a ceasefire with Putin, and he takes it for about an hour, and then he starts blowing the hell out of you know Ukraine again. It, the whole thing is incredible. And look, that is a problem that Europe should be worried about more so than us. But we're supposed to be trying to help them, but they've turned out to be totally gutless. And that's Donald, our troops, we have 280 Marines at an air base in northern Iraq that's surrounded right. by ISIS troops right now. Right. Um, and I've been, scream I've been screaming for a week, why doesn't Obama, the great commander-in-chief, order airstrikes around the clock to destroy all of the ISIS troops that are around them? Why doesn't he bring in airborne troops, 10,000 of them, to protect them? What is going on there? inconceivable and you can you may have a route you may have a route i'll bet you they would not mind showing something about you know th those guys and and women in some cases are sitting there and they're just sitting ducks and i would bet they they would love nothing better than to wipe them out and i'll bet that's what they're thinking about right now but why doesn't the president do something right now instead of having a meaningless conference on extremism where they won't even say muslim and extremist in the same breath they won't even say it that's right why does he need it because he's he's not a leader number one he's not in my opinion he's not fit to be president he's not competent and in my opinion, uh, it, it is just, and you know, it's easy to turn around. I'll give you another example that I never, this is one as a business guy. Look, so we're negotiating with Iran to get rid of the nukes, right? And which is so vitally important because once they have the nukes, it's a whole different ballgame. So we're and we take off the sanctions. 
instead of increasing the sanctions, because they want them off. We won't negotiate unless you take off. The, so we take off the sanctions. We take all the pressure off them. And now they're just tapping the ball down the line as they make, you know, as they do everything else, uh, you know, go through the process to come up with some nice nuclear weapons. Now, who would negotiate by taking off the pressure as opposed to applying more pressure? And you say to yourself, like, this is negotiation. I wrote the art of the deal. This is negotiation 101. Who would do this? So I look at that and I say, where are these people coming from? And then I watch this young lady with the glasses sitting on television <laughs> and saying that we have to create economic development in Syria. And you know the other thing that's amazing? In Syria, we're bombing them, and yet we're totally enemies of Syria. And Assad is sitting back and saying, wow, this is the best thing that could have happened. Because You know, Assad is suddenly our ally against ISIS. And the only reason ISIS is running rampant in parts of Syria is because we destroyed most of his military in those regions. They got everything ass-wise backwards. Donald, you're a big supporter of Israel, are you not? I am. Okay, I know that. So you've got one of the great leaders of our time, a war hero and a great leader, Netanyahu, coming to speak to a joint session of Congress. The president hates him because he's jealous of him, number one. And this is what shocks me. Donald, number one. Do you support Netanyahu appearing before Congress? I do. I think it's fine. I think it's great. I think he, look, he has no real, and I know him very well. You know, he asked me to do a commercial last time he ran. I was the only person that, in terms of celebrity, but he really wanted me to do a commercial, and I did, and he won. He was happy. Uh, the truth is, it's another voice. He's not getting anywhere with Obama. Obama, you know, I have many Jewish friends that, that support Obama, and I say, why? And they can't. Yeah. They can't explain why. They support him. They give him money. They give him campaign contributions. And why? This is why. The, this is the worst enemy of Israel. This is the worst enemy of Israel. How could Jewish people give money to this man, who may as well be working for the Muslim Brotherhood in terms of Israel? Yeah. Well, when and by the way, when he comes and does his speech, I think it's just. I think for him, it's good. I think it's going to end up being good because he's going to explain what's going on, and he's going to be emphasizing what's going on with Iran. They're sitting back, tapping us along, and I know deal makers that do that. They tap you, tap you, tap you, while they're working behind your back to try and do something that is not good. So you know, I, I understand the game better than anybody. And when I saw the sanctions being taken off Iran, it was incredible. Now you know, you look at what's going on. And when you look at, 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 and Michael, when I see what's happening in Syria, where we hate Syria, but we're helping Syria by attacking the enemy, maybe we should attack ISIS every, every place but Syria. Let Syria beat <laughs> ISIS. Let ISIS yes. probably win. And then after they win, we knock the hell out of them. I mean, you know, the problem is we are checker players in this country, and we're playing against great chess players. And you know, you're not going to win. Yes. And, and I've I look, Donald, I've said for years on the show, never underestimate the Bedouin's mind. We're dealing with people who have been at war for a, a thousand years. Their entire culture is built about around warfare. They're a warrior people and they're outthinking these children that Obama's hiring from America's worst colleges. Today, she got up this nutcase with the glasses and she doubled down on her statement. She said, I guess people are too dumb to understand what I said, but she used a higher class version of that. She said, I guess what I said was too nuanced. You heard that? She's too new. That she was too nuanced for us. You hear this one? She's being cute. She's trying to be cute and little. Uh, but she's the face of America now, I know. Donald. So getting back to politics just for a minute or two, I don't know if you want to talk about it. I don't want to put you on the spot, although I'm not afraid to put you on the spot because nobody ever has been able to do so for very long. But I'll try, I'll try to ask a question that everybody wants to know. I personally think Jeb Bush is unelectable. What do you think? Can Hillary beat him? Would Hillary beat? Who, who can beat Hillary Clinton is the only question there is, right? I would say Trump. Trump. I would say that Jeb Bush is not going to win. I would think that many are not going to win. Now, I'm not just going by polls. I'm just going by instinct. I right. think that she will not be... Uh, Easy to beat. I actually feel that Obama would have been easier if, if Mitt Romney didn't uh, choke, and and he choked like a dog. And I've seen it in sports, and I've seen it in life. Some people, you know, they're choke artists. They can never get to the finish line. When mm. Mitt 
Romney didn't finish off that campaign because in the last month he should have won that campaign instead of sitting in his house for four weeks and doing nothing and then doing horribly in that third debate by not even responding to some basic questions. That he, he beat Obama up in the first debate. Obama looked like a dummy. He was just ridiculously beaten. And I believe that Mitt Romney then threw the next two debates, but that's my own conspiracy theory. So you feel, look, I know you're a friend of Hillary Clinton and you respect her. There's no question about that. I mean, you're a man at a high level, so obviously you meet all these people. But could you beat her in debates? I believe I could. I mean, I think I have the goods because, you know, if you look at it, I mean, who, okay, you take Secretary of State. Who was worse? Are you able to name one that was worse? No, she destroyed the entire Arab crescent by introducing the Arab Spring. Look what she has wrought in the world. Right. She's got a lot of problems, but right now she doesn't have problems because right now she'd love to run against Jeb Bush. Yeah, because oh. Jeb Bush, Jeb Bush is, a, is, a, is a, like a Joe Palooka doll that I bought when I was a kid in Queens, the type that you would hit in your living room, and it would always bounce back, you know, made of like a plastic f substance. Right. Well, remember those? Did you get one of those on the other side of uh, Union Turnpike? Were you allowed to have that as a kid? Turnpike. I loved Union Turnpike. That's right. We used to have the uh, the little stores there, and that have all sorts of games like that. That's true. <laughs> you know, people don't know it. You lived on the on the good, good side of the tracks, and I lived on the poorer side of U of Union Turnpike. It's amazing. It was a nice uh, region of Queens, but both sides were good. You know, in those days, both sides were good. Frank. That's right. There was no such thing as a bad area over there in those days, and the police ruled that area very well because any of my friends got out of, out of line you know what the cops did with them don't you they didn't let them get away with it for too long very little Donald little Trump look I really hope that you run I mean I don't know you know what you're really gonna do and people say he just wants publicity I hear all of this crap I don't believe it you know and I know you can build all your buildings and if we let these barbaric monsters uh, get any more traction in this world those buildings might come down with the rest of America and we need someone like you to make sure that your buildings last for a very long time Donald well I appreciate it and I do love the country and I'm giving it very very serious consideration and I may surprise a lot of people and if I do it I'll do well and I'll tell you one thing making this country great again it won't even be that difficult because the potential in this country is enormous all we need is a leader, Donald. We're dying for someone to get up and talk about America the way it is, not the way Obama sees it as. Obama sees us through a, through a, through a flawed eye. He doesn't like this country. That's apparent to anybody with an IQ above 90. Well, there are certainly problems, and we certainly don't have leadership. And if it is leadership, it's leading us in the wrong direction, Michael. And you know that probably better than anybody. Well, I hope to see you in Florida one of these days. You know, I haven't gotten there once this winter. Would you believe it? Get there. It's a great place and a great state, and I hope you get there. I love Mar-a-Lago. Donald Trump, run for the presidency. Thank we you really need it. Thank you. you very much for being with us on The Savage Nation.